Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this. The new iStick TC200W from eLeaf, right here on My Vaping Place. Hey everybody, nice of you to join me today. Thanks for coming. Um, okay. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Main reason for that is is because I've been wanting to put this thing through its paces. I got this thing about two, three weeks ago now, and I just wanted to see what it was, how it worked, and get a really good handle on this little baby before I put up any kind of a review on it or anything like that. I really like this mod. I'm going to get that out of the way right now. But then again, I like the eye stick form factor. It's one of the things I like about it is the, the shape of it, the way it fits in my hand and everything else. But this is a big baby. Okay. Well, more about that when we come back up from the bill cam after we take a look at this. So sorry about the car horn out there, but some people just have to announce their presence all the time. Um, yeah. So let's go down to the build deck, take a look at uh, what you get in the box and everything else. And uh, we'll go and get more into it. And then we'll come back up here topside and uh, we'll have a little discussion about what I found. Okay? Meet you down below decks. Okay, here we are down on the build deck. Let's take a look at this wee little beastie and see how things are going. Okay? Here you have the front of the box uh, with a nice picture of the uh, mod itself on here as well as you can see here it says upgradable firmware. Yes, it can be upgraded just like its older and smaller brother uh, the TC100W. On the front side of the box we have iStick TC200W by eLeaf and the eLeaf World uh, URL. On this side we have eLeaf. On this side we have the two, the three color choices that you get, black, white, and gray, this being the gray. On this side we have the eLeaf symbol again. And on the back you have a brief description of what the mod is all about, including the scratch and check security code. And here it says standard configuration. This is basically what comes in the box, okay? So let's take a look and see what we have inside. All right, let's open her up. And in here you have the manual. Now this user's manual is quite thick, as you can tell. Um, the reason why it is that thick is because it comes in several different languages. You have English, you have French, you have German, you have Spanish, you have Russian, and you have Italian. The only thing that you're going to be able, you're going to be dealing with here is probably the English version, which is the front, roughly 12 pages, 11 pages actually, 12 page being an empty page <coughs> left for you to put notes and stuff like that in. I usually put all my notes and stuff like that in the back of the, in the back of the back, manual. Okay. So this is very, very comprehensive. Unfortunately, as it with most manuals that come out of China that are not written by native English speaking people, um, it has a lot of syntax errors in here, which you're going to have to learn to deal with. But all in all, it is quite comprehensive and it is rather good compared to some of the manuals that I've seen. On, we're going to leave that over here for the time being. You also have this warning card. Please do not use batteries with torn casings as it is a safety hazard. Oh, yes. If you have a battery that has a torn case, please, please, I beg you, go out to one of these, manu one of these battery websites, pick up some of the battery wraps. They're like dirt cheap. They're 50 cents a dollar for maybe five or ten of them. Pick them up and, and, and redo your batteries. Seriously. You don't need to turn around and have a hand grenade in your hand every time you're going to ha take a vape. Seriously. Battery safety is one of the most important things that you can do for your safety as well as the safety of everybody who's around you. 
You also have a USB cable here. Now this is not just a USB charging cable, it is a USB charging and data transfer cable, which means that all of the pins in here are in use, not just the two center ones. I'm gonna put that to one side. Now, in here, what's left is the subject of our little discourse today, the TC200W. Now, this is, I, I really love this mod. This mod is really a gorgeous little mod. It fits my hand rather well. It's a little bit on the large size, but then again, I have long fingers. And, well, as you can see, it fits nicely. Uh, you have your fire button here. You have your uh, wattage and temperature down, wattage and temperature up, your mod, your mode button, uh, which says mod on here. Um, I guess they couldn't get the E on there, so what can I tell you? And then you have your USB uh, charging and data port. On this side, nothing. On this side, you have the E-Leaf name and iStick TC200W. On this side, you got nothing. On this side, let's get some of this stuff out of the way here so we can have a little bit more room to work. Now, on this side here, you have the bottom, you have your, um, you have your, um, your battery access door. You have some venting here, you have some venting here, there's more venting here. This is actually venting here, even though it's just the hinge. And to get, into, get access to your batteries, you press this in and you lift it up. Now, it's a little bit crazy to try and open this up without batteries in here, but it, it does open up and it opens up fairly easily. Now in here, you have, in the very bottom here, you have a little plastic insert that has plus sign on this side, a plus sign on this side, and a negative side here. That corresponds with the markings here on the, um, the battery door, which are negative, positive, negative. It's the opposite ends. Now when you put these in, let's get some batteries out here. You put the batteries in these two side ones here go positive side down that's this side here that's the positive side that goes in like so and the center one is with the positive side up now these are VTC fours um, they're high drain IMR batteries without protection and they are they work very nicely in these uh, you can use something like a Samsung 25R or a VTC5 if you can find any of them around that are not clones. There's also a couple of other new batteries that have just recently hit the market. My suggestion is to go to um, the, I believe it's Reddit page, and check out Battery Mooch's, um, Battery Mooch's latest uh, graphic that he put out about the uh different batteries that he's found that are actually were that he recommends for use in your mods okay I'm using VTC fours close this down and lock it now when it each one of those has a little the, the contacts in here has a little spring in here and there's also a spring in the bottom that when you press this down puts pressure on there and also allows you to close the door so that way you have a firm contact. On the top here you have a 510 connector. The 510 connector is spring loaded and it is a rather deep 510 connector. And it will take just about any damn thing that you can put on there. I have put on quite a few different um, Connectors on, uh, excuse me, 510 connectors from different, uh, from a couple of different uh, addies and drippers, and they all fit. Because this is raised up off of the uh, deck here, ever so slightly, uh, to allow airflow for those uh, atomizers that uh, get their airflow coming from the 510 connector. This does not actually, any atomizer that you put will not actually sit on this deck. That will ride on this little ring here. 
Now this ring, unlike the one that is in the TC100, is firmly attached to the body. It is not a floating 510 connector. I believe these four screws here not only hold the top of the mod in place, but they also screw directly to, the pl to a plate or something that's underneath of here. I have not had this thing open, so I cannot turn, I cannot fully vouch for that. Five clicks on, five clicks off. One, two, three, four, five, it's now off. One, two, three, four, five, it is now on. In the, when you first turn this on, if you give me a second here to s go through this, you will have, it will come up in what a variable wattage mode. Um, I'll explain the reason why I have this set to one watt right in a, f um, in a few minutes. Now, the standard modes that you will have here are variable wattage, nickel for temperature control, titanium for temperature control, stainless steel, and three memory modes which are for TCR values for your custom wires, whatever you decide that you're going to be using. If you have some, some crazy funky wire that's got some crazy TCR value to it, you can actually go in here and uh, enter those TCR values and make use of those wires. All right. I'll show you how to do that right now. First off, it has to be, the mod has to be in the off position. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's off. While I'm here, let me just show you that in this mode, your screen right now that I have is reading this way. If you press the plus and minus button together, it will flip the screen. So that way you can use it as a right-handed mode. I prefer to keep it in the left-hand mode, like so. All right? To enter your T TCR values, you hit the fire button and the negative button at the same time and you hold it down. Oh, sorry. That's the battery voltage modes. That shows you the, the voltage of each one of the batteries. That's the fire and up button. You can see I really remember, I really read this manual, right? Yeah, you know, well, I did read it, but I read it a while back. So, Plus, your fire button moves you between the M1 and the actual value, which would you would adjust by hitting the plus and minus buttons. And you can go, when it's in the M1, you can go 3, 2, 1, and change any one of these values. To lock it in, you just press and hold the fire button. Now, if I was to change those, have changed those from the standard 120, uh, those, whatever values I had entered in there, would have been entered okay so let's turn this back on again one two three four five if you press the fire button and the negative button at the same time you go into stealth mode which doesn't really work when you don't have an atomizer on there so we're going to just shut stealth mode off the next one that you have is your mode button which is this one you press and hold that down to change between your individual modes, as I showed you just before. All right, when you're in temperature mode, the negative button brings your power, your uh, temperature down, and the plus button brings your temperature up. If you want to adjust the wattage that you're going to be using here to bring, the wattage is used to set the value of how much wattage you want to use to bring it up to temperature and hold it at temperature. In order to make those changes, you press the mode button and the negative button that adjusts the wattage down. And in order to adjust the wattage up, you hit the mode and the power button. I personally find this to be a major pain in the royal arse. I wish they would have found some other way of making those changes rather than having to press the mode button and the temperature button, the, the plus and the minus button at the same time. It's, it's a pain in the butt. All right, when you're in wa uh, variable wattage mode, you can change your wattage by going here and pressing the power up or the power down buttons. To change from Fahrenheit to Celsius or back again from Celsius to Fahrenheit, 
you have to take, if you're in Fahrenheit, you have to press the down button till you get to the lowest Fahrenheit reading, then press it again, and that will take you immediately to the highest Celsius reading, and then you can go up and down from there. Now, when you get, if you adjust this all the way down, as I just did, down to the lowest Celsius reading, if you press the minus button one more time, it will take you to the highest Fahrenheit reading. It does round robin, okay? Let's see. Lock and unlock. To lock your display in place, and so that way you don't have any accidentally go um, changing any of your values, you hold the negative and the plus sign down together, and that locks it. Hold it down again, and it unlocks. Okay, let's go here to stainless steel. Now you notice here on the ohms reading, it has a little padlock. That is lock on the atomizers. That right now it's saying that it's holding a value in the device's memory of what the last atomizer's uh, resistance value was. To change atomizers, you press the, the fire button and the plus button at the same time, and that unlocks it. Now, if you press and hold the fire button, that will pretty much clear the memory in the device as to what it's, what's in there. Now, uh, let me grab one of my little K-Funds here. Okay, this is now, it has no value showing here. So let me just uh, take a second here to juice up this K-Fun. Since I pretty much juiced through it, I'm using one of my DIYs. I call it Joe's tobacco, Pipe Tobacco because it, it, this is a work in progress right now. Um, many, many years ago, I found a pipe tobacco that I absolutely loved and unfortunately I was never able to find it again and I have been in search of that pipe tobacco flavor for years and I'm almost there I'm still working on this but this is like I said this is a work in progress and it'll probably be a work in progress for a long long time all right so Clean off our fingers. Yes, as you can see, this is a fingerprint magnet. So, um, yeah, you'll see. All right, so let's put this atomizer on here. Now, it's reading 0.58 ohms. Press that. Now it's still reading 0.58 ohms. So we hit um, power and plus up at the same time. That will lock in the ohms reading. Uh, no, we don't want 600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just a little too, too hot for this child. Put this at 420, eh, 430 works. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. Um, one of the problems, ooh, leakies. I got leaks all over the place here. Damn. Oops, and we got an ant attack here. It's June. What do you want? The ants are out. They're trying to trying to spread their colony all over the world. And let's clean this out. There we go. Okay, um, I have had one major issue with this mod since I've been using it. Still got juice all over this thing. Um, the major issue that I've been having is that there are some times when I will put a new mod on here excuse me, a new atomizer on here. And 
when I put that atomizer on, I do go through the pro procedure of um, initiating the new, mo the new atomizer onto here and locking it into place, and it will... Uh, it basically jumps out of temperature control mode into variable wattage mode. Now, according to the manual that's in here, it will do that if the resistance of the atomizer is above 1.5 ohms in temperature control. The problem is, is that as this atomizer that you see here, as you saw what it said, it says a 0.58 ohm coil in here. Now, a little earlier, I was basically filming this thing, and it was constantly jumping in and out. Unfortunately, I don't have the video of that left. Otherwise, I would put it in here at this point. And besides, it was way too long to be for this. I'm trying to cut this thing down some. And that is one of the major problems. Now, one of the things that I, one of the issues that I had with the version one of the software on the TC100 was that it was doing the same damn thing. This is version one of the TC200 firmware. I believe that iStick is using the same, well, maybe not physically the same board because the buttons are in a different configuration and the micro USB port is on the side here of this, at, on this particular one, as opposed to being on the bottom on the TC100. But I believe electrically and, and, and logically, this board is exactly the same as that of the TC100. And I believe, I firmly believe that this mod needs to have a s firmware update put out by eLeaf forthwith to address this issue. Now, this mod was not sent to me free for the purpose of review. I bought this and I like it a lot. And I like the form factor. And for me, this mod is a very comfortable home mod. It's not a mod that I take out with me, though I have taken it out on a couple of occasions. It's not as comfortable to use as the TC100 is, simply because of the size and bulk of it. It's a lot easier than using or trying to use a Rouleau, from what I've heard from some of the people who have Rouleaus, but it is still a big boy. And because this is my home mod, I'm not so concerned about it. But if this was my going out and about mod, I would have a lot more concern about it. Simply because of the fact that this screen that's on here, this OLED screen on here, just like the OLED screen on the TC100, is very hard to see in very bright sunlight. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, sun directly overhead, you uh, can't see diddly squat with this thing. Okay, you have to find some shade and hopefully you'll be able to discern what's going on. And because this thing does slip out of temperature control and into variable wattage, that is the reason why when you saw earlier, I had this thing set to one watt. That is so I would not burn the wicking in here and also to let me know instantaneously that it has slipped out of temperature control and into variable wattage so that way I can try and find some place where I can actually see what's going on and take care of the issue and get back to vaping so yes this has some issues issue one being the wattage adjustment having to hold down the mod button and then making the adjustments from there and it's scrolling so fast that you generally will almost always overshoot the wattage that you're looking at it then wind up under shooting and then having to turn around and adjust it one one watt at a time until you get to where you want to get it to issue two the big one jumping out of tc and into variable wattage mode that to me is the big one okay and we'll discuss more about this when we get back topside and we can talk a little bit more comfortably all right so i'll meet you back topside talk to you in a few Hey everybody, nice of you to join me back here topside. Let's have a little discussion here about this device. First off, let me 
reiterate the fact that I purchased this device for my own, for my own pocket. The reason why I did was is because I like the form factor on this device and I like the way the device feels in my hand. I had a chance to hold this device at one of the local brick and mortar shops and it just felt right. The, the shape of it, the fact that where the button, the fire button is, even though it's heavy little mother uh, because it's got the three 18650s in there, it still felt good. It still felt right in my hand. And because it is a large device, I basically keep it here at home as my, my, my home device. I don't take it out and about with me because it's, it just weighs too much because of the three, the three 18650s in there. Also, because of the following issues. The wattage adjustment. Now, the wattage adjustment on both the TC100 and the TC200 are identical. As a matter of fact, there's just too many similarities between the two. I believe eLeaf took the same chipset and instead of using the exact same physical form factor, change the form factor slightly to accommodate some of the issues that some of the other reviewers have been having, namely the fact that on the TC100 you have the micro USB charging slash data cable on the bottom and you have to lay this thing over in order to be able to change it, excuse me, charge it. Oh boy, I'm doing good today. Yeah. Um, and on the 200 they put the micro USB port right on the side of it. Good thing. Thank you, eLeaf. Uh, the button layouts on the 200 are completely different than the button layouts on the uh, 100. Yeah, other than those physical changes, I believe that it's the same exact chipset. And I'll explain the reason why I'm saying that in a minute. The issues that I'm having with this are the wattage adjustment. I would love to see it where if they could either do three clicks on the fire button or three clicks on the mode button to swap the temperature, which remains constantly on the display, switch that with the wattage mode so you could easily just use the plus and minus buttons to make your adjustment because when you have to hold down the mode button and the plus button, you're going to overshoot the setting of the wattage where you want to go. And if you're adjusting down using the negative button, you're going to overshoot it either way. You're going to shoot it, overshoot it either way, going plus or minus, it doesn't matter. And you're going to have to go in one tenth of a watt increments to get it to where you need to get it. Okay? It, that's, it is the way it is right now. By flipping the wattage with the temperature for both of the 100 and the 200, that would make life so much easier. So much easier and make it so much more user friendly. Now, I don't know if it's something that is physical with the chipset that they can't do it, but if it's not, if it's something that is a software related issue, that would be a great thing to do to change in an update to be able to allow you to to flip those two values, the, the temperature and the wattage, so that way you can make the adjustments. Just saying here. Um, something for you guys over there at eLeaf to, to, to really think about. Next thing, screen brightness. Now, by and of itself, the screen brightness is can be nothing but a pain in the ass or it can really turn around and be an, become an issue. And it becomes a major issue when you deal with the third problem I have with that, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, the screen brightness, for those of you who don't wear glasses, like I do, and like a lot of other people do, might not be a problem. But when you're out and about in bright sunlight, it is damn near next to impossible to see what that screen is saying. You need to find a shady doorway or uh, under a tree or something like that or pop into a store to lower the ambient brightness of your environment in order to be able to see what's going on. It is what it is. When you're inside and you're out of the bright sunlight, 
it's really not an issue. But when you're in bright sunlight, it is a major issue. Now, when you're out and about and you have this issue with screen brightness and you can't see what is being projected on that screen and you pair that with the third issue, which is the device jumping out of temperature control mode and into variable wattage mode, that becomes an issue. You're out and about. You have to take the, the tank off to fill it up. You put the tank on there. If you don't have your resistance locked, which you should have, but if you don't, it's going to turn around and ask you if it's the same coil or a new coil. Screen brightness coming into factor here. If you hit the plus button, because you know plus is same coil, minus is new coil, you hit the plus button, you start vaping on it, and it decides that it's going to jump out of TC mode and into VW mode. If you have your variable, if you have your wattage set to anything greater than one watt, you're going to get the burnt hit from hell. I know it's happened to me. Okay, you have to set the wattage mode at one watt when you're out and about. You really, you have to do that. This is a firmware issue because I had a similar issue with the TC100 until they came out with the version 1.1 on the firmware and it no longer does that. It no longer jumps out of TC and into VW. Doesn't happen anymore. They need to come out with a firmware update for this baby. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Now, as with any device, be it a mod, a tank, whatever, it is up to you to decide if you can live with the individual peculiarities of the device. I, as your reporter, can only tell you what I have found while using the device. The workarounds that I have come across, I have been able to develop or come across in my talking with other reviewers and other people who have the device as to whether or not you want to spend your good, hard-earned money on the device. Now, normally I would give this mod a automatic thumbs down because of its jumping out of temperature control and into variable wattage mode. It doesn't happen all the time, only sometimes. And I have not been able to figure out exactly what the commonalities between each one of those times is, other than the fact that A, it's unlocked, B, I have previously been using the tank, taken it off, and then put it back on again. And as I said, the Omeric value has not been locked. Then it will do that. Or if I take off one tank, put on another tank, and the wattage, excuse me, the ohmage is unlocked, then it will happen again. My suggestion to you is if you like this device, if you want to get this device, and it is relatively friendly compared to like the Rouleau, the form factor on the Rouleau, I like the form factor on the Rouleau, I like the form factor on this. Both of them are very easily usable. They fit the hand very nicely. But for carrying ease, the TC200 is a little bit better because it's, it's flatter, it's not as wide it fits on the hip a little bit nicer. So if you're interested in this or the, the Rouleau, um, I would suggest this one, but I would suggest not getting this until such time as eLeaf comes up with a firmware upgrade for it. And as I said before, it would be nice if they would include the temperature wattage flip by some combination of button presses, etc. The easiest thing would be press three times on the mode button and it automatically flips over between one and the other. That's all I got for you. And with that, I am going to say goodbye. You have to make your decision as to what you want to do. So take care. God bless. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord behold you in the hollow of his hand and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care.